So with the crisis suits divided into smaller, more specialist units, how are they shaping up in-game in the 10th edition Tau Codex? Let's talk about the technological pinnacle of the Tau Elite with an overview of crisis battle suits in-game. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking crisis suits, and in this video I thought it would be interesting to talk over the rules for the new crisis suit unit variants, some of the numbers that they can spit out in terms of damage, and a few of the many ways that you can use them. Even if the unit's role might have changed really quite a lot since before the Codex, I still think they're a very interesting unit, lots of interesting loadouts, and how they'd be used could vary really quite a lot depending on detachment and attached characters, I thought it could be fun to take a look at what could go together. In the lore, the Tau Crisis battle suits are pretty much the most iconic unit in their army, I'd say. Technologically advanced war suits that are borne aloft on jet thrusters, often deploying from the sky via Manta Strike to do daring insertion maneuvers against the enemy army, often doing daring close range strikes to take down the enemy elites, or destroy an important vital target like war machines with an enormous flexibility on loadouts and weapons that they have access to to achieve their goals. Their current model kit from GW costs £50, €65 Euros or $80, coming around the points per dollar range of sort of 1.8 to 2, not awful but also not standout good. And for that you get the three miniatures that you can equip with a whole bunch of options, plus two drones per crisis suit. In general I feel like there's a lot of love for these in Tau players, they generally want them to be at least an important part of the army and fairly threatening. I think the current miniatures are nice enough realisations of them. Lots of options for war gear and exactly how you mount it on the suits, and they're a little bit more posable and dynamic compared with the previous kit which they replaced. I would recommend using magnets for the weapon options, allowing you to swap things out, so you could say rearm and retool a crisis loadout to suit your needs. Say if you wanted to swap out burst cannons for flamers, or plasma for melter, or anything like that. As per normal with 40k miniatures, if you were looking to pick up some of these at a discount, there's plenty of places around the world where you can get them just a bit cheaper. I'll leave a few channel affiliate links down to discount retailers in the video description, where you can save somewhere between 10 and 20% off the Games Workshop web store price, nice enough when the kit is a fairly expensive one. Anyone using those does help support all spec's tactics as well, so a massive thank you to any of you using those when you do pick up miniatures. Getting into the rules for the suits though, and as mentioned they have really changed quite a lot. In previous Index Tower and prior to that they were generally operating as one main data sheet, just one unit to represent all types of crisis suits with pretty much fully flexible war gear, though it was certainly pretty odd when Games Workshop removed the points cost for war gear pieces in 10th edition, it did mean that with crisis suits there was just nothing to stop you spamming the strongest option that they had available to them, which in 10th edition turned out to be the cyclic ion blasters which weren't even present in the kit. In the codex their rules have got a lot more restrictive on a number of different levels, though I still think that the end of result is interesting, though it certainly could be pretty annoying for people who like the customization and like to mix it up a bit more, or people who have now illegal loadouts to the models glued in, not very helpful for them at all. Apparently the fully flexible crisis suit loadouts will go to Warhammer Legends. In any case, for the base profile of the crisis suit, it's the same between all units, but they just change up their weapons and special rules that they get access to. The crisis suits are a vehicle unit with fly, despite being small ones with only four wounds. That means that they'll be able to fire within melee with big guns never tire, and it even actually allows them access to tank shock as well if you needed an elastic effort to cause a couple of mortal wounds to take down a key foe. But that's much better if you do have far sight along, of course. A 10 inch movement does make them fairly speedy, and they get the fly keywords to potentially move over enemies if they need to. Given that their vehicles are not infantry though, they'll typically be having to move around ruins rather than just ghosting straight over them, which does mean that they have to think about terrain a lot more than they did, say, in the past in 9th edition. Crisis suits now come in blocks of three models only. Previously, we could take enormous amounts of them, all the way up to nine for the bodyguards in the past. That was reduced to up to six in early 10th edition. Now it's literally just three for every squad, and that is a bit of a nerf with certain synergies in codexes. They're not going to be quite as efficient for stratagems or guiding as they were before. Having been separated out into three different data sheets, though, it does mean that theoretically you could have even more of them on the table than you could in the past. Theoretically, all the way up to 27 crisis suits if you had mind to. Otherwise, for their core profile, they get to Deep Strike, 
That could be a good way of getting plenty of their slightly closer range weapons into range if you want. They definitely have to think about whether you're starting them on the board or not, depending on the opponent. If they've got loads of models to screen things out, then a few more on the board would make sense. Their defensive profile is toughness 5, 4 wounds and a 3 plus save, which I think is kind of middling, given that depending on their exact unit cost, it looks like their printed codex points is around about 50 points. The defense for that isn't awful, but it's certainly not a standout. Most of the time they will get 5 wounds admittedly due to, I think, everyone wanting to take a shield drone along per suit. Generally special weapons will be fairly bad news for them, things like plasma and melter, and certainly any heavy anti-tank weapons will have a good time against them too. The Sunforge Crisis suits are a little bit more durable, getting the 4 plus invulnerable save from a shield generator. Otherwise their OC2 and Leadership 7 plus could certainly challenge a midfield objective against a smaller enemy unit, and as you'd expect for Tower, their melee is pretty weedy, hitting on 5+, plus with 3 attacks at strength 5. It's never going to be their main thing, though if you absolutely needed to, you might well be able to smash a couple of light infantry with that in a pinch. Getting on to their different data sheets though, first up we'll start with the cheapest one, the star side loadout. This was listed at 140 points in the codex. The codex points could potentially change, though they certainly might not. These are kind of essentially completely new units given the radically different way that they function and having far less damage threat, so it does make sense they might go down in cost quite a lot compared with the index version. The star side crisis suits get the choice of any two of flamers or burst cannons. The burst cannons give you 4 shots at 18 inches, strength 5 and AP 0, damage 1. The flamers are the fairly standard issue profile. D6 torrent hits with ignores cover at strength 4, AP 0, damage 1. They get 2 special rules. They get to improve AP against anything that isn't a monster or vehicle. Just in case their raw profile didn't put them at so much better towards destroying infantry, that just drives it home a bit I guess. And I've got a support system which allows them to fall back and shoot, that is handy enough to have them on the front line, maybe it means that you can be just a little bit more brave with them and just throwing them towards enemy infantry formations, and they're not just going to get bogged down and tied up in combat there. Here's a rough idea of what a unit of three of them can do. You could certainly mix and match loadouts, though if you compare two flamers to two burst cannons, generally the flamers do a bit better against the actual horde targets that are their forte, burning down 12 termagants and able to threaten overwatch to smash a whole load more in the enemy turn. Though for things that are standard space marine size or heavier, the burst cannons start to win out a bit more. If they're guided, they'll be at least the same against space marines and a little bit better against terminators or rhinos, though they're not going to be doing much damage against those in general. Both guns do have their advantages. Flamers get the advantage of ignoring cover as well as the overwatch. The burst cannons get the better range at 18 inches, which is meaningful. And they can also profit from a whole load more buffs that don't affect the flamers, things like reroll hit roll buffs from like say tetras or stratagems and things, and they can use sustained or lethal hits, say if you had them on the go from Montcar or Kaoyon. Overall I feel like both of their guns do seem pretty viable. Maybe the flamers could be a bit more interesting in retaliation, Kadra, given the core buffs of the detachment don't care about the hit roll, and the burst cannons might be a bit more interesting in Kaoyon and Montcar where they do. For the second loadout we have the sort of anti-elite variant crisis suit in the fire knife. These were printed as the most expensive variant at 165 points printed in the codex and they get the choice between missile pods and plasma rifles. Missile pods at 2 shots 30 inch range, strength 7, AP 1 and damage 2. The plasma rifle a single shot at just 18 inches now, strength 8, AP 3 and damage 3. The fire knives get an inbuilt hit roll buff, getting two reroll hit rolls of 1 against any target or they get full hit rerolls against enemies that are starting strength, meaning they might be a better one to fire slightly earlier in the shooting phase, and that could be a fairly big damage swing depending on your opponent if they've taken any damage or not. Their weapon support system gives them the additional bonus of ignoring modifiers to the hit roll, so that to get around things like stealth. These guys might not have the biggest amount of volume fire, but they should be getting their hit rolls really quite reliably between those two rules. Here's the damage output for a unit of three of them shooting against something that's starting strength. The two weapons are fairly balanced against things like Space Marine Intercessors out of cover, killing around about three of them either way. The Plasma Rifle generally pulls a bit ahead against anything with heavier armour, Terminators, Rhinos or Lamb Raiders, and the Missile Pods are solidly better against more horde style units with lower saves. The damage output on these really could vary quite a lot depending on whether they're firing against something starting strength or whether they're guided or not never mind any other buffs that you might have from the detachment. I feel like the missile pods maybe don't have the most exciting damage output in the world, but they are very long range, 
There could be a big 30 inches and firing from your deployment zone, maybe even doing the jump shoot jump thing in retaliation, Cardra. Plasma rifles will do generally better against anything that's got cover unless you're managing to guide the unit to ignore it with a marker light. And they're going to be pretty threatening against things like intercessors or terminators, particularly any three wound infantry without an invulnerable save will be their ideal prey, I guess. Finally for the crisis suit variants we've got the Sunforge, 160 points as printed in the codex and these guys come with the two fusion blasters. Fusion blasters are basically strength 9 melter guns, one shot each at 12 inches with AP4 and damage D6, melter 2 if you can get within 6 inches. The Sunforge suits come with a 4 plus invulnerable save with their shield generators which probably means that they're the tankiest out of the suits even if they do cost a bit more than the star scythe ones. And they get a pretty seriously good rule with re-rolling wound rolls and damage rolls against monsters and vehicles. Feeling like there's a little bit of similarities between them and the Space Marine Eradicators there. They also get the hit re-rolls as well, but generally Tau have a few ways to make that work anyway, what with guiding them and things. Between those scary fusion blasters, melter and guiding, you could potentially get them up to some very serious damage output. For a squad of three of them, their initial numbers are maybe a little bit on the tamer side. On buffed they won't be doing as much against things like regular intercessors, killing more like two of them as opposed to the three for the fire knife, but they really are pretty threatening against things like tough vehicles, seven wounds to a rhino tank on average, or six wounds to a land raider even outside of six inch melter range. Both of their numbers increase by a sort of similar amount against the vehicle targets if they're either in melter range or stealth suit guiders, you could guide them with tetras as well for a full hit reroll which would be better for them. If they were guided by stealth suits though, you could be doing an average of around about 16 wounds to a space marine gladiator tank, or around about 13 or 14 wounds to a land raider. If you threw in any other detachment specific buffs on top of that, then you could be getting something really quite serious. Finally for the data sheet, you get the option of which drones you can take. You get two per suit and you can't double up on them anymore. Previously the default option tended to be to double up on shield drones for six wound crisis suits. I feel like given the changes one of them at least seems auto include, means that things like damage 2 weapons and take an extra shot to bring you down, it's just generally handy against higher damage stuff as well. Otherwise beyond that I guess there's not loads of choice, kind of depends on whether or not you want one marker drone to make the unit a little bit better at guiding other units if that's relevant from time to time. I feel like if they're loaded up with exciting weapons that want guiding it then that's going to be a little bit less of an interesting idea, and there could just be a bit more argument for loading up on volume fire. I guess it could be a particularly interesting one for perhaps flamer crisis suits where they're not really going to want or need to be guided all that much. Perhaps they could do a fair bit of burning and then guide one of your other units while they barbecue the enemy. Another small thing to note is that the gun drone also confers the assault keyword to the unit as well which can be kind of handy. Means that you could advance and do actions and things and still be eligible to shoot. Every so often that can be a big deal. Overall putting that all together I do think that crisis suits have some big strengths and weaknesses. Given the unit divisions, it does mean that they can be quite focused damage dealers against their ideal target, though perhaps coming at the expense of being quite so flexible and quite as general purpose as the cyclic ion blaster ones were. They've got deep strike and good movement, which is pretty handy for getting their firepower where it needs to be, and I feel like perhaps their biggest advantage in Codex Tau is that they're one of the best units to use quite a lot of the detachment buffs that they can get. They've got good access to characters and enhancements, the various damage dealing buffs that the units have themselves can confer to the characters that are attached to them, so you could get reroll wound rolls against vehicles on a commander with a whole bunch of fusion blasters themselves. And it does feel that they're kind of relevant with most of the detachments, maybe Montcar and the Retaliation Cadre in particular. As for downsides, smaller three strong squads won't be quite as efficient for stratagems as it was before. Not quite as much value as throwing overwatch at them and jump shoot jumping with just a small unit isn't as big value as doing it with an enormous squad. Most of them do have really quite short range bar the missile pods and I'd say that durability is perhaps the other weak point, not really being particularly hard to take down with either special weapons or heavy weapons. Maybe not the hardest to take down when they're at the front of the army and bound to get hit back hard. Out of just about any of the units in Codex Tau Empire, the Crisis Suits perhaps have the most things to support them, given that they're pretty dangerous and at least still fairly points intensive damage dealers with commanders attached, they can get some good value out of for the greater good. Plus one to hit, maybe ignores cover and potentially getting further boosts on top of that, perhaps stealth suits for the reroll ones to hit and wound. 
or maybe Tetris with full inbuilt re-rolls to hit. It is interesting now how some of the firepower buffs do a little bit better with different units. Tetris perhaps being particularly nice with the Sun Forges, given that they want all the hits they can get because they already get the wound re-rolls. But perhaps the Stealth Suits being a bit better for the Fire Knife ones who can already get full re-rolls to hit inbuilt. Shadow Sun could be handy for some of them as well with re-roll ones to hit in an aura plus the chance to farm some command points on stratagems. For the generic stratagems, Overwatch might be the best out of them. One command point to get some hits on sixes isn't too bad, perhaps particularly in Kaoyon or Montcar, even better if you've got a character attached, and particularly nice for the Star Scythe ones with the Flamers. Could potentially mean that they're pretty nasty objective skirmishers, both getting damage on your turn and theirs. Tank Trot's usually not going to be so great on them, with only strength 5 on those Battlesuit Fists, if you absolutely do need just to finish off one injured unit though, then it could be enough. Against anything toughness 4 or less, your odds on to do around about 2 mortal wounds or so. If it's something with a really high save, and has just got 1 wounds left and could cause you big problems next turn, it could be a good last ditch option. I feel like the battle suit commanders are perhaps going to be one of the biggest draws to taking the crisis suits, and with the loss of the standard crisis commander, there's now 3 to choose from from the codex. The Enforcer Commander was previously 90 points, he is a little bit slow so he would make the unit slower on the board, maybe he is better for a deep strike kind of commander, and he does make the squad a bit tougher given that he worsens AP by 1 by things that target the unit, that's quite nice now they can't just all get invulnerable saves, otherwise though he can just bring a fair amount of scary firepower to the unit, he can't take 4 psychic iron blasters anymore, though I feel like it's probably still one of the most interesting weapons, I'd likely take 1 and then the rest of the guns are going to depend on his roll. I'd be quite tempted by fusion blasters if he were dropping in. Getting another 3 melter style shots on ballistic skill 3 plus, going to 2 if guided could be big, maybe particularly with Sunforge. The other generic commander option is the Cold Star Battle Suit. This one gives you a 12 inch move and confers the same onto the Crisis Suit, so they'll be going extra rapid, maybe the one to go for if you're planning to start the unit on the board. He also gives all the weapons the assault keyword as well, which could have them moving around really rapidly, potentially all the way up to 18 inches. The assault keyword's a bit more meaningful if you're not playing Montcar though. Again, I'd be most likely tempted to take at least one cyclic ion blaster along for the ride. He also gets the option of the high output burst cannon as well, which I feel like is a raised weapon above the rest. Basically two burst cannons worth of firepower at 8 shots, strength 5, AP 0 and damage 1. I feel like that's usually going to be worth it and then fill out the rest with whatever best works with the unit. I feel like he could be an interesting one to get the closer range weapons into range. It would be a quite nice one with jump shoot jump in retaliation cadre, seeing as he's able to get a big 12 inch move on that jump shoot jump move. Finally for leader choices now, there's Commander Farsight himself. He changed quite a lot in the codex, getting tougher with a 2 plus save, 8 wounds, and having his special rules changed around so he gets you free stratagems now. He was 90 points pre-codex, which I thought was a pretty good deal for him. His big buff is giving you plus 1 to wound within 9 inches. Really good if you can get that close, maybe with Retaliation, Cadre, and the close range drop. Otherwise, he could be really quite an interesting choice for Rapid Ingress as well. Maybe having them turn up somewhere that's safe and then can move within that range in their turn. And that way you could also follow up with a charge. Farsight himself gets a strike with a couple of high intensity plasma rifle shots and then charge in with the Dawn Blade. A bunch of damage 3 attacks, again with a much better potential for Tank Shock. Overall I still think is a strong choice, you do have to weigh him up versus taking an Ethereal along for command point farming though. Call the Detachments as basically the central unit for the army, they have lots of interesting stuff from the Retaliation, Cadre, Montcar and Kaoyon. If they're running alongside the Crew Detachment they're not going to get any Detachment support, it could still be kind of interesting maybe for bringing some Sunforge Crisis suits to handle heavy tough things that the Auxilia can't manage. The Retaliation Cadre does feel like the detachment that's the single most Crisis focused one. This one's all about the battle suits, with the battle suit keyword being needed for every single rule. The core rule getting you plus 1 strength within 12 inches and plus 1 AP within 6 inches. The plus 1 strength does help out some weapons quite a lot. Strength 10 Fusion Blasters are very nice. And perhaps beyond that, both the star side weapons are particularly good with it. 
Strength 5 Flamers and Strength 6 Burst Cannons are both rather nice against a whole load of units. The AP is definitely harder to trigger, perhaps only reliable to get that off with the 3 inch drop stratagem that you can do. Maybe one of the other biggest draws to the detachment, a pricey 2 CP, but it does mean that you could say have a whole bunch of Sunforge Fusion Blasters with Farsight dropping in to just absolutely destroy one enemy heavy target, or using it to even get some Star Scythe suits to clear the enemy objectives out, perhaps drop on the enemy home objective and replace their troops with yours. The other big thing for the crisis suits in the detachment is the one command point jump shoot jump and that's really quite godly mobility. Perhaps fire knives or burst cannon crisis suits could make some good use of that. Moving 12 inches perhaps with a cold star attached, strike the enemy and then use their big 12 inch second move to hide. I'd say that those two are the main two stratagems but there's a two command point to explode a suit, a 6 plus feel no pain. Sustained hits versus bigger units and an anti-charge stratagem. All of those could be situationally okay, but I feel like the jump shoot jump and the close drops are the ones to focus on. Otherwise for the enhancements, the star flare jumping on and off the board could be a big deal. Could be really nice to repeatedly redeploy fusion blasters that way. And there's a few other fun ones for making commanders into better damage dealers. Extra strength and AP is pretty fun though. Definitely helps out with the weapons that needed to be that close anyway. Melters and flamers might really like this. Next up is Montcar, which I think again is very powerful for the suits. Lethal hits and the assault keyword if your guide is. Lethal hits is really pretty handy on the vast majority of the crisis suit guns bar the flamers, given that they're mostly mid-strength. Maybe not quite so powerful against things they'd wound on a 3+, plus anyway, but definitely rounds them out against the tougher stuff. The assault keyword when guided is really nice for just a little bit of extra mobility, means you wouldn't have to choose between advancing to get to an objective or shooting, and he could need it to get line of sight or range sometimes. I feel like maybe one of the staple stratagems might be the auto advance 6 inches with the assault keyword. Means that you could be having a crisis suit rocket out 18 inches to be able to get line of sight on something unexpected. I feel like the others are interesting enough. One command point to get reroll hits against one unit permanently if it destroys something of yours. And a one command point for two units to focus fire on one enemy for extra AP. Could be pretty nasty for missile pods or maybe even the star scythe ones getting AP2 on all that volume fire. That one does seem pretty dangerous on paper with a whole bunch of burst cannons, some star scythe maybe. Even with just two basic units without commanders for 280 points you could be throwing 60 shots down range or with effectively AP2 against anything that isn't a monster or vehicle. Otherwise there's one for minus one damage in the shooting phase, kind of pricey but could be great against the right sort of firepower. And for the enhancements, there's one to allow a couple of units to gain scout, which could be big for the early game lines of sight again. And a sustained hits one for a unit guiding another squad. Could be another way of getting yet more damage on sixes. Finally for Kao Yon, they get their big damage boost when they get to battle round three or later. Sustained hits one or sustained hits two if guided. Usually 50% damage extra if they are guided. And that will be more valuable than Montcar on the whole with the lethal hits. Though you do have the trade-off that it comes later in the game rather than the nice and early one that Monkar gets. Otherwise I've got two other nice damage dealer ones on battle rounds 3 or later. One for extra AP at close range and one for plus one to wound enemies clustering around one objective marker. Though again you do have to wait later in the game to spring your trap. I feel like literally all the enhancements are at least somewhat useful for the crisis suits. Early Kao Yon in round 2 is a really easy include for a unit that's dropping down to deal some very heavy damage. Could have a whole bunch of scary burst cannons, plasma rifles or fusion blasters with sustained hits too there. There's a redeploy one, a boosted damage dealer one and a guiding unit giving you lethal hits. All of those seem kind of okay though maybe not super auto include. Maybe the redeploy one could be just quite helpful for the army in general though. I feel like crisis suits might have been taken a little bit less centre stage for Kao Yon. now they can't jump shoot jump in this one anymore. That stratagem went to the retaliation cadre. Overall I do think that despite the changes, the new crisis suit loadouts still seem pretty interesting to me. There's lots of really fun combos that you can do, layering your choice of commander with the choice of detachment and then adding in enhancements, stratagems, and any other buffing units like tetras or stealth suits on top of that to give you some really cool damage. I think just from initial impressions, out of the units my favourites are probably the Sunforge ones. They do just seem genuinely scary versus vehicles, plus are tougher than most due to the invulnerable saves that they get. Probably wouldn't want to go too crazily heavy on them, 
but just a unit to threaten to drop out of the sky with a bunch of fusion blasters and then hit the enemy hard with whatever detachment boss that you've got going. There's a good chance that you either get sustained hits, lethal hits or strength 10 fusion blasters depending on your choice of detachment. Otherwise I do think that provided it is costed a bit cheaper, the volume fire from Star Scythe does look rather nice. Several ways to have them get lethal hits, sustained hits or extra AP. I feel like the flamers could be really quite good fun in retaliation cadre. A whole bunch of strength 5 AP 1 shots out of there and ignoring cover. Potentially getting all the way up to AP minus 2 if they can get in super close. From initial takes I feel like the fire knife maybe looks like the most niche. I feel like you are paying a big premium for those sort of general purpose weapons that they have. You don't really get that many shots with them even if they do land their hits pretty accurately. I guess could be interesting enough for a slightly longer range unit that's still winding up a threat. Between all their rules and interesting stuff that you can layer on them, I still think they're going to be interesting in Codex Tau. Loading up with the commanders, stratagems and enhancements, either Cold Star commanders or Deep Strike being the best ways to deliver them. I guess it just remains to be seen when Games Workshop do release the final points costs, whether or not they're holding their own quite as well against other good damage dealers in the Codex. Perhaps for some more obvious competitors, Breaches and Devilfish might be quite nice for Star Scythe for moving up the board, taking objectives and gunning down infantry. And if you're looking for dedicated anti-armour, the Skyray gunships do seem to do that really quite well now. Getting twin linked on those missiles was huge. It'll be interesting to see whether or not they outcompete the Sunforge for the role. In any case though, let me know what you make of the Crisis suits with their new units and loadouts. Look forward to hearing your thoughts down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Auspex Tactics. I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new ones just about every day. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Auspex Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things come next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.